you get your views from television news, you'll only hear stories that corporations choose. You'll only get to see what they want you to see. You're gonna have to read and decide what you believe. Watched in horror, 911. The planes hit the towers and the towers came down. Did you ever wonder how they fell so fast? Well, maybe that's a question that we're not supposed to ask. Don't you think it's strange? There were no fighter jets. Did someone give the order not to intercept? And if they really scrambled, then why'd they fly so slow? Maybe there's an answer that we don't want to know. Where was our president, George W. That fool? He was visiting with children at an elementary school. And when he heard the news, he didn't seem concerned. He just calmly read a picture book while all those people burned. Bushes and Bin Ladens. Now, what's that all about? While all of us were grounded, they flew his family out. Osama got his training from the CIA. Our soldiers took Afghanistan, they let him slip away. A new Pearl Harbor was their big chance to launch two wars that they'd planned in advance. Now we know they lied about weapons in Iraq. Did they allow the 9-11 attack? your views from television news you'll only hear stories that corporations choose you'll only get to see what they want you to see you're gonna have to read and decide what you believe Howdy! Welcome to, this is show 100. We do 26 shows a year, the fourth year, the 22nd show of the fourth year. That's 100 shows. So I'm Bill and this is Greg and we're both from Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth and other organizations. But now look right behind me here. I'll get out of the way. Sort of, I guess, I, I don't know. Anyway, you can see that, uh-oh, that show that we did, uh, on 9-10, you know, the 9-11 special, we showed 45 minutes of the uh, um, 
the new release by Richard Gage and Architects for Engineers for Architects and Engineers for 9/11 Truth. Their new release is called 9/11 Explosive Evidence. The experts speak out. We showed about 45 minutes of two hours and 18 minute movie. Well, as you can see right there, oh good, they made me smaller so I don't have to duck. <laughs> uh, coming up on Wednesday. Now they're going to have other other schedules, but this is I got them to do this schedule for me special so I could announce it on today's show. Coming up Wednesday, October 5th, channel 22 at 6 p.m. Be ready to record the two hours and 18 minutes and uh, you'll see the entire thing. It's a great one. Well, Today we have a lot to talk about, and uh, I mean we've got the Anwar Al-Laki, Al Al Yeah, I keep saying that wrong, but you know I, I'm not a Middle Easterner very much. So uh, anyway, uh, and of course we have a little bit of a follow-up from the uh, Navy SEAL thing. In fact, let's start out with that. Shall we start out with that little clip from the Navy SEALs? That sounds good, uh, Bill. And. and Go ahead. So are we going to roll right into that? Have we got, can. Got it ready to go? Let's yeah. go. Okay, here we go. And go ahead and just switch it to the computer and bring this up for a while. First of all, Alex, let me correct you on something. All the Bin Laden raid SEALs were from SEAL Team 6. No, no, I know. I'm, I'm talking about the helicopter that later... Right, right. But, but, but all the SEALs that were on the Bin Laden raid were from SEAL Team 6, and as I understand it... All the SEALs that were on this helicopter, likewise, were from SEAL Team 6. Yes, sir. That's what I'm saying. And, and, and But there were more. There were like 22 of them. Yes. And the question is, and I, I, I know where you're going with this because I've thought about it also. The question is, were the same SEALs that were on the Bin Laden raid on this helicopter? And that, unfortunately, I don't know if we'll ever know because no one's even going to know who the Bin Laden SEALs were. Okay, I do know. This is what I'm telling you, and this is dangerous information. Okay, and again, this is directly well, ahead of me because I don't know. You know, all I know is it's a speculation that I took was, oh boy, the 22 seals that went down in this helo were they the Bin Laden seals, and would they have done that to shut them up? Well, let's look at this from this perspective, Governor, and, and then I'm going to tell you what I was told, and I want to get your expert opinion on this. And again. I, I, when I got you on as a guest, I hadn't even thought to bring this up, so it just popped in my head now, so I'm going back to the data, so it'll take me just a second to be exact here. Um, what I was told through a wife of a SEAL, who was not in SEAL Team 6, but is currently serving, was that the SEALs got on the helicopter at the Bin Laden raid, this is what witnesses all saw, and that it blew up and had some type of bomb on it. They didn't blow it up and that they were killed, and that Pakistani military came and got the bodies and got the helicopter. That has since come out on Pakistani TV, and that was that big diplomatic row and fight with their governments. But that was just from this wife of a Navy SEAL, and I confirmed she was who she said she was, but I... Well, but, but Let me interject something, though, Alex. <laughs> SEAL Team 6 is so secretive, wives don't even know about it. Well, I was going to go further, though. That's what I'm telling you. Because No, let me explain. I have a friend who was on SEAL Team 6, and his wife had no idea that he was. Well, That's this one... how secretive Team 6 is. No, I understand. Wives don't even know if their husbands are on that team. So I would be a bit skeptical of your information, of, you know, on that basis alone. Well, listen, that's why I was saying I didn't go with that info because I couldn't confirm that. In this other case, this is a current SEAL who has a friend who is in SEAL Team 6. He was not in the helicopter, the second helicopter that went down, but that what he said is the SEALs are angry and think that either Al-Qaeda or somebody else set them up, put them on the National Guard helicopter, and that it was some type of assassination. So that's the info I have, and that is directly from the father of the Navy SEAL. Okay, I, I can't comment on that really because I know nothing about that, but... Uh... I don't know. I guess all I can say is, Alex, in light of the stuff I do and the information I've gathered doing my TV show and the other things I've looked at, nothing is beyond... I don't put anything past anyone anymore. So I'm not going to say this could be true or couldn't be true, but I certainly wouldn't say that it, 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 it's not so. I can't say that, but it very well could be. Who knows? 
Let me ask you. That's where I'm at now, Alex. I don't trust my government at all. I mean, I just happened the other morning to watch the movie on Pat Tillman again. And, and every time I watch that movie, and I recommend people, it's on Showtime now, I think, or whatever, called the Pat Tillman story. I urge people to watch this and watch and see how despicable our government was in the death of Pat Tillman. And, and the worst part about it is the very end when all these generals and big shots are brought in front of Congress, and they, they say, I can't recall over 90 times. Over 90 times in their testimony. These guys obviously are suffering from bad cases of Alzheimer's. And I say that sarcastically, naturally. But at 90 sometimes, I watch the Pat Tillman show and, and I just fume with anger the Pat Tillman story. So I do not trust my government at all today. I don't trust the word that comes out of them. They're a major pack of liars. I don't think I can be any more blunt than that. Oh, I think you I think you hit the nail on the head. I mean, take Private Lynch. We, uh, five of her team suddenly got killed when they came out and said that she wasn't the hero, they said. It was a PR stunt to get women in frontline combat. And they did the fake raid that Jerry Bruckheimer directed uh, via satellite on the hospital where they said, hey, come get her. And the Iraqis had pulled out two days before, the Iraqi military. Uh, you have Pat Tillman basically being assassinated, the cover-up of that that you were just that you were just alluding to, but specifically, Governor Jesse Ventura, underwater demolition team, Navy SEAL, the whole nine yards, when you heard that members of SEAL Team 6, a part of the same unit, uh, went down the, the biggest one-day loss of life in the 10-year history of the Afghan war, and it just so happens to be the Navy SEALs, and as God is my witness, talking to the father of a Navy SEAL that my family's known for a long time. I'll just leave it at that. Okay. Uh, says, yes, my son is good friends with somebody in six. And he told him that the whole team thinks that either Al Qaeda put a bomb on it, but then they think it might be the government because it was real weird how they were all put on this junkie helicopter. They, you know, never use these national guard helicopters and they usually split them up and they thought the whole thing was suspicious. And, 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 and you know, Remember this, Alex, that's the first thing you look for in conspiracy in government. I'll, I'll just state this, and I have no knowledge. What you're telling me, I can't add to it. I can't say you're right or wrong. But I will say this. In all of my dealings in, in doing conspiracy theory and writing my book and doing everything I've been doing in the last over decade now, the thing you always look for with government is when there's a violation of standard operating procedures. When government violates a procedure that they normally do, will or won't do, whatever it might be, and believe me, it's that way in the military, it's that way in regular government. Everything government does is done under standard operating procedures. When those are violated, that's your first sign that something isn't kosher. That's your first sign that you may have a, a cover-up, that you may have a conspiracy, if you want to call it that. Okay, now... Uh, I cut it off a little abruptly, but basically that's the whole point right there. Standard operating procedure was violated once again, and conveniently they got rid of any evidence or any witnesses who might have testified to a story that might be contrary to the official story again. And remember, I was just saying, they did the same thing on 9-11. They when they didn't follow standard procedures about launching NORAD. They didn't follow standard procedures about you know who to blame they didn't follow standard procedures about the investigation at all you know that what they didn't make any forensic investigation whatsoever of the uh ground zero so um and this this kind of leads us right in do you have any comment on that um but this leads us right into the the latest assassination uh, you notice i'm wearing my impeach both hat I, you can't really see it very well but it says impeach both and that was supposed to be Bush and Cheney. But now it's Bush, Cheney, and Obama, too. I mean, we already had plenty of reason to impeach Obama for all the violations he's done so far. But now an extrajudicial assassination, you know, kill just kill somebody, an American citizen, blow him up without a trial? Uh, let me get that on the screen here if I can f get it going. Um 
Yeah, there we go. Okay, you can go ahead and put this in the background here. Al Qaeda's Anwar al Awlaki killed in Yemen. Now, what do you think about that? Well, I think Anwar al Awlaki is an actor. Absolutely. He's, he's an actor who works for the CIA. He has made numerous so called Al Qaeda videos, uh, usually featuring himself talking about uh, some uh, issue. And these Al Qaeda videos are all coming out of a group called the Intelligence Center which is associated with another group called SITE, located in Virginia. And they were the producers of all of the Osama bin Laden videos that came out after Osama bin Laden's likely death in the winter of uh, 2002 or the fall of 2001 in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. Uh, many of those uh, videos have been thoroughly debunked as uh, showing imposters, actors impersonating Osama bin Laden. And Awlaki Al is a kind of replacement for Osama bin Laden as a, a head of Al Qaeda and performing the same role as a propaganda boogeyman. Now, personally, I, I don't think that uh, Anwar al Awlaki has been killed. He was said to have been killed in a very similar fashion in 2001 by a missile strike, but that turned out to be uh, a no-go. Uh, it's said that there was another occasion when uh, uh, his death was announced. Right? Yes. So uh, there have been three accounts of his death, including this latest one. And they one. don't retract the later, the earlier ones. They just bring it out. We did. We killed this guy finally. You know. Right. The the and gullible public uh, hears that uh, the Al Qaeda leader has been killed. They celebrate. Uh, a year or two later, they kill the same fellow again, and uh, people celebrate again and uh, have short memories about uh, these things. Now, speaking of short memory, if anybody out there watching the show has a short memory, remember Anwar al Awlaki was a guest at the Pentagon the day, in the days after 9-11, shortly after, when, within a week. That's right. And, you know, we've all wanted to ask, what was that about? What was he doing there, especially since as soon as he's gone from there, he's the big Al-Qaeda leader that we have to get. Why didn't you arrest him while he was in the Pentagon eating dinner? Well, conveniently, they've assassinated him, supposedly, and now he can't answer any of those questions, just like the Navy SEAL team can't answer any questions now. And there's also a reason why the CIA wouldn't actually kill this man, and that is he's such a good actor and performs this role of the so-called leader of al-Qaeda for the CIA. If you kill someone like that, it'll be hard to hire another actor. Yeah, somebody uh, nobody will good. want that job. So <laughs> the likelihood is that uh, if they finally uh, given uh, Anwar al-Walaki uh, uh, a new job, uh, he'll uh, shave his beard and uh, uh, go on to the next CIA assignment. Okay, now, if that wasn't enough, you know, stuff to keep you convinced that we're fighting a, a desperate war against terrorism all over the world, and they're trying to get us, and we have to be ever vigilant, and we better spend our Social Security money on weapons. Well, we've got a, a new one here. The FBI comes out with a with one here it says FBI again thwarts its own terror plot I guess I got that already set up right uh, this is incredible they they bust a guy who's an American this time they, a, a gullible American who didn't have any means of hurting anybody unless he walked up to him and tried to hit him and the FBI recruited this guy gave him money gave him the, the C4 obtained the remote control airplane which is probably about eight feet long it looked like one of the bigger ones but uh then the story is that he's tr he's going to blow up the pentagon and congress what else I, I i don't remember what else it said there but uh this is just 
another one. The FBI stepped in just in time to save us from this terrible plot that they concocted. And then on the side, to all the people who are nervous Nellies about, oh, but what if he had actually succeeded? What if they couldn't quite have stopped him? Well, don't worry. The C4 we gave him was inert. <laughs> there never was a threat. It never was a terrorist attack. It was a totally staged FBI contrivance just like every other one we've seen. The Portland, you know, Christmas tree bomber, the Somali uh, shoe bomber, which was supposed to be an Anwar al-Laki thing. He, they, they let him be the scapegoat for all of these so, supposed bombing attacks. <laughs> oh, it's just incredible. All of these FBI sting operations where they choose an incompetent patsy to set up with all the supplies for committing a terror attack, and the, and the plan is usually something that's preposterous, that uh, an intelligent person, a really competent person, uh, would see through and realize that this isn't going to work. Uh, but they set this up, they bust the uh, patsy, and it makes big news and uh, another statistic for uh, FBI success in thwarting terrorism. Meanwhile, what's missing is any real Al-Qaeda presence or any real Al-Qaeda attacks in Western countries. If Al-Qaeda was real and global Islamic terrorism was real, as porous as the borders of the United States are, during the past 10 years since 9-11, we should have had many serious, successful terrorist attacks. It is so easy to walk across the border from Mexico into the United States. Once here, it's easy to live here. It's easy to obtain weapons here. Terrorist attacks do not require bombs. Oops. There are other ways to commit attacks. Uh, this was demonstrated, for example, by the Beltway snipers in DC who terrorized that city uh, by sniping people at random. Uh, uh, we could have all kinds of horrible, horrific attacks by Al Qaeda in the United States, but it's simply not happening. Where are these terrorists? I, yeah, I mean, if, they, was, if they wanted to be here, believe me, they would be here. And they're talking about, I mean, they're really hyping all across the country how what the real danger is, is American Muslim terror cells that don't have any connection to anybody on the other side of the ocean. They're, they're totally independent cells, and we got to worry about them because we know there are Muslims everywhere you look. And then on the other hand, oh, we're not against Muslims. We're not, it's not a, a religion thing. Oh, but anyway. Uh, I, in, yeah, Bill, well. in, the world to, in the world today, what's come to pass, 9-11 was an inside job. Al-Qaeda is CIA. Americans are the new Nazis. Not and, so new, but yeah. <laughs> and the Muslims are the new Jews. My dad fought in World War II, and he told me, you know, from when I was a young kid about World War II, he said, son, the Germans lost World War II, but the Nazis won. Yes. Oh, my God. I didn't understand what he meant. And then he started telling me what turned out to be Operation, what, Paperclip? Paperclip. The one where we brought in 5,000 Nazi scientists and intelligence thugs, and they formed our CIA and formed our, uh, well, at that time it was OSS, later to be the CIA. Um, it's just amazing. And, and now that what you see is the fascification, the Nazification, Nazi, I made up these words, <laughs> Nazify, to turn us into Nazis. And we, and we just, every inch of the way. Well, if anybody had any, you know, doubts about it, we're supposed to be gung-ho, yay for Americans. We're going to support Americans 100%. Except, well, we don't really mean it. Because here's the story about a first responder. How about this Wall Street thing that's going on? It looks like if you look at the news that there's, you know, 100 people in Wall Street protesting. And every once in a while the cops have to break them up. 
but if you've taken a look lately, they've shown some aerial views. I don't have one with me. Maybe I'll pull one up later. But the entire street packed as far as you can see, from side to side, as far as you can see, is what's going on right now. And I'm going to play right now a, uh, a little cut. Here's a first responder who has something to say about this Wall Street. So go ahead and switch to the computer, and here we go. Hi, so um, why are you here this evening? I was actually, this really wasn't my choice to come down here, but unfortunately, working for the system, I got screwed by the system that I worked for. Under the mask and the glasses is a construction worker who was at the World Trade Center site the first week that the towers came down. I voluntarily, on my own, side by side with the FDNY, NYPD, and Port Authority officers, dug side by side with them using our tools, our dump trucks, our cranes, our pickaxes, our chain blocks, our oxyacetylene tanks to burn the steel, side by side with them as a first responder. Ten years later, I can't get disability for that. I can't get workers' compensation. I was diagnosed with stage two autoimmune disease called sarcoidosis. Everything you see in here are inhalers, painkillers, steroids, uh, nasal, uh, you know, things to wash out my sinuses with, and all sorts of little goodies that a 34-year-old man should not be taking this early in his life. So my reason for being here simply is that I'm not just here for the first responders that got screwed like myself, but I'm here for everybody else because as I'm here, I'm listening to other people's stories about them having financial difficulties and paying through the roof for college tuition, paying for uh, their high rents, paying for school, selling their clothing and shoes and stuff on eBay just to eat. And it's enough. It's enough already. And it's a shocking shock to me that as a union worker underneath this mask and glasses that somebody like me can't get the same benefits of the people that help defend this country like the ones behind us wearing the badges and the FDNY. They got all the pageantry, all the parades and all the benefits handed to them and somebody like me who was down there for as long as most of they were can't get anything. I'm lucky I got the basic coverage but it doesn't cover half of what's in that plastic bin. And it's not right. I can't pay my rent barely. I had a bar I got to borrow money every week from my family and friends. I'm lucky I got that. My unemployment doesn't cover it. My union benefits are about to run out. I can't handle it. But just like most other people, you hear all those voices back there. They're in the same boat. So every person that's here, including me, has their own individual story. But it all, bo it all boils down to money and somebody else having control of our lives. If only the people in compensation disability said, hey, look, man, this guy's sick, was a volunteer, let's help him out. I wouldn't be here right now. But since the system turned its back on me, I'm turning my back on it until it helps me. Just like right. these people are. All right. Well, be safe, be well, and thank you for And anybody here. that's listening to this, particularly, <laughs> where is my... Uh, I think I put it away. It's, oh, no, here it is. And also, I happen to be a member of Anonymous. If there are any Anons that are out there, I suggest you make your videos. Go on to Anon Ops, go on to the IRC chats, whatever it takes, and spread it out. We need more of you down here. Don't, you, don't just, you know, read it, whatever you see on the videos, and read stuff on the blogs. We physically need you down here. And tell your friends and tell other people that are active to get down here. Stop sleeping and do something. Absolutely. There's enough talk. It's time to do. Awesome. But do it respectfully. Obey the laws, be respectful, but you do have a right to say your piece. And that, that's basically all I have to say about that. Thank you. All right. Okay. Hello. Uh, okay, uh, we're back again. And um, yeah, you guys, why don't you put up the, the uh, telephone numbers behind me and uh, we're, we'll open it up for phone calls. But. What we just saw is a perfect example of how, you know, we are just filthy liars of our country, supposedly. I mean, we, we don't protect our people. This whole Homeland Security thing is about protecting us, but we won't even protect the people that we don't have to have guns for. Like this guy, we can protect him by giving him medical, medical care, and we won't do that as a country. Well... You know, there's a lot of things wrong with this country that I could go off on. I mean, for instance, I've been one month without water now. What type of country would let a 60-year-old man be without water because he can't pay a water bill? This country will do it. I'm here to tell you. I almost lost my house because they wanted to take my house for $1,000 worth of taxes. But by the grace of God, that was saved. 
but not by anything our country did. And so, you know, every time they say they're trying to protect us or they care about Americans, that's a damn lie. Anyway, sorry, I'm getting, I, I, that's my personal stuff coming into it, and I'm sorry I'll t eject that. We'll go back to 9-11 now. But the phone call sign is up, 503-288-4442, and 503-288-4448. So you want to save the day by talking about something let me cool down? <laughs> well, uh, we were listening to uh, Alex Jones and uh, uh, Jesse Ventura talk about uh, the... Uh, Navy SEALs that were killed in <laughs> Afghanistan on the uh, National Guard helicopter. Now, if I recall, there was something like 36 uh, U.S. personnel on that uh, helicopter who Which were said, overloaded. said to have perished. Yes, yes. They overloaded it by 50%, and that's another one of those standard operating procedures that isn't violated. Yes, normally. yes. Now, the raid itself in Abbottabad there are many reasons why that raid probably did not take place. For one thing, the uh, helicopters that made the raid, um, it said that, that one of them landed in the courtyard. And the fact is, that courtyard it's way is too small, it's it? way too small. It's 60 by 100 feet. We're talking about a Black Hawk helicopter with a rotor span of 54 feet. No raid planner well, what do you mean? He had or three pilot. Feet, three feet on each side? Well, no and 12 foot walls. So, you know, it's a death <laughs> trap. Nobody, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't have planned to do that, nor would they have done it on the spur of the moment when there were open fields around there to land in. What's more, the compound where they supposedly landed and crash landed uh, is completely separated from the main compound where supposedly Osama bin Laden was. They would have had to land the helicopter, break through a wall, go through an alley, break through another wall you to know, get into the compound. They should have contacted Jerry Bruckheimer like they did with Jessica Lynch. I mean, he, yes. he by telephone, orchestrated the rescue of, of Lynch from that Iranian, or, I mean, Iraqi hospital. And the funny thing was, they had to do several takes. They go, cut, 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 everybody back into the plane. Okay, come off the plane again. <laughs> and they filmed it a couple times. Anyway, they should have done that with this because those stupid green light videos that they showed, you know, it's just bunk. Another impossibility that we've been told about the Abbottabad raid to get Osama bin Laden is that one of the helicopters uh, became damaged and unusable with no injuries to the personnel. And then all of the uh, U.S. Uh, Navy SEALs, plus the body of Osama bin Laden, went on the single remaining uh, Black Hawk helicopter to fly out of there. Well, here's the problem with that. You start with a uh, Black Hawk helicopter with a crew of anywhere from two to four, plus 12 Navy SEALs, uh, two teams making up the 24-man team uh -huh. that supposedly got Osama. And you've got nearly 30 people crowding onto one helicopter to fly body. back to, yeah. and, and a dead body to fly back to, it's impossible. But before Those, it blew up, they managed to get Osama's body so they could put it in the ocean. Well, yes, and, and one problem with <laughs> that is, that? Yeah. one problem with that is that at top speed, the flying time from Abbottabad back to uh, Bagram, where they said they went, uh -huh and uh, did a few things with the body and then took it to uh, the aircraft carrier in the uh, Indian Ocean. Top speed in, those ha in, in, a, in a Black Hawk helicopter, it would have taken them 10 hours. And the fact <laughs> is that the raid, which took place around midnight, uh, was only 10 hours away from the time that Osama's body was supposedly dumped in the ocean. And it leaves them no time to prepare the body. Nothing and in between, just it, travel and right, get there, boom. Just, just pure travel, and they would have had to refuel the helicopter in flight, which is another amazing operation. The whole thing is very, very far-fetched. Well, before we get much further, we have a call coming in, but I want to say one thing about this last video that we showed uh, at Wall Street, occupywallstreet.org. We'll, we'll keep you clued in. You can see pictures of it. But we're having, coming up on October 6th, that's Thursday, October 6th, 
We have two phone calls now. Thursday, October 6th, Occupy Portland. We're going to have an occupation of Portland, and you can check that out at OccupyPortland.org. And on the 15th, I think it's the 15th, now this you'll have to check out the time and date for sure, but there's supposed to be an anti-war protest in Portland. Hey, wouldn't it be nice to finally have one of those? What happened to all these people that are anti-war that have given up since 2003? You know, oh, they put a worldwide protest in 2003 before the war started. More protesters than ever in the history of protest. And everybody said, well, that didn't work, so I give up. I think it's about time to start doing it again. But let's take one of those calls. Go ahead, call name, uh, Awesome. My name is Will, and uh, I totally understand what you guys are saying. First of all, like the hel- to g- continue on with the helicopter gig, the helicopter tail obviously was important, the one that broke off and that kind of stuff, <laughs> and they were making deals with it, you know. It's, and, I mean, it's like, okay, the government lied to us. Ooh, impressive, <laughs> you know. It's so commonality nowadays, and it's such, it's like when the president came on the television and talked about, like, uh, the taxes, we need to hike them, no tax cuts for rich people. Oh, people freaked. <laughs> They're all, oh, well, this isn't class warfare, but it is. That's a, it's, that's a remarkable point. You know, there, the, some rich people are complaining, oh, they're waging class warfare against us. <laughs> what a joke. I mean, the winners are clearly the, the upper class. If you look at that, well, from your point of view, it starts out low and goes along like this. It finally gets well, to the last half a percent and shoots up. Yeah, it's a class you know, warfare. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I'm pretty well versed in jobs, and I could pretty much do any economy. I got dealt with uh, a disability lately that I wasn't counting on that I'm dealing our system with and our system I mean my dad was in the military and I love our troops I love people in general humanity but I'll tell you our system has gone downhill and it wasn't that great in the first place and most people know it and a lot of people that work for the military will tell you it's like a big business one hand never knows what the other hand's doing, it even is, if it's messing up itself. It is a big business. Yeah, exactly. And you have to understand, what? like, people get hurt, people, friendly fire happens, people die, there's conspiracies, you know. They have their own law, you know, it's a whole craziness. And, I mean, you have so much going on. You have the drug companies, you have the lobbyists, you have, you know... Uh, Washington, D.C. has no idea what the commonality to people are in any of the regions, let alone Oregon. Well, imagine what the public would, I mean, what the change would be like if everybody understood all the way to the highest level in government that 9-11 was an inside job and that we have to get to the bottom of it. What do you think society would be like with that type of a change? I think I think it's there already, honestly. Like Zeitgeist made a huge deal, you know, and it, I think it hit home with a lot of people. Like that that film alone uh, got awards and stuff, you know. It was pretty big, and I mean, I think it proved that it's been happening constantly. Even the depression was, like they said, manufactured, hmm. and it makes sense, you know. And it's totally like a uh, government playing government playing God, but so is. I mean, Hollywood's done the same thing to some degree in other in other ways, and so it's kind of a tough gig because we're all these commonality people stuck in the middle, and we're seeing this stuff go down. And you're like, they're forming our opinions for us and affecting our education at the same time. I mean, they're making us working class slaves, and then they're treating us bad. They're making us fight over health care. They're making us, and here we are going. We're smart enough to know there's only one percent of you guys that own everything. You know about mm. that healthcare thing. What's really funny is they tell you, you know, we can't do like socialism because, well, look at look at Russia. They had to wait for their medical care when there was anything out of the ordinary. Well, in other words, they rationed it by time. Okay, here we ration it by money, and that would be okay with me if they let us have some money. You know, that's the whole problem. 
they, they want to ration things by money. That's the capitalist way. But then they go out of their way to take that money from you so you don't have any of that. And, you I, know, that's I not think, a coincidence. I think they go one step further, even, where they go and give you uh, tax refunds and tell you they're great for you and tell you they're giving money back to you. And then they raise all the taxes and are taken <laughs> five times from you. And you're not supposed to look at that. I mean, it's just ridiculous. They want your patriotism to be uh, blinding. And I, you know, it just enrages me. And they do work off a of time scale, too. I mean, my dad's a vet, and he had a, he had Agent Orange. And, I mean, they timed all those people out till they died before they admitted it happened. Right. And now they're covering them. Isn't that weird? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they don't know anything about it mysteriously enough, you know, enough to, like, prove that it has any problems handing it down, you know. You're absolutely right. Hey, I don't mean to cut you short, but, but I, I got another call. I know a lot of people and stuff, and I'm talking pretty broad topics. I'm going to get off the gig. I'll catch you guys later. Have a wonderful evening. Thanks, Thanks for, calling. for calling. You had some great comments. Oh, man, absolutely. And let's just go straight to the next caller. That sounds good. If he's... Still there. Hello, caller? Yeah, I'm still here. All right. Well, what do you think so far? What do you have to say? Okay, um, first of all, um, I don't know if I should congratulate you for your 100th show or not. Oh, yeah, 100th show. Whoopee. Yeah, and it's sad that we had to do it, right? Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's my first reaction. But uh, a couple comments you made. Uh, first of all, you mentioned how the Germans lost the Second World War, the Nazis won. Reminded me of the film that came out a few years ago by Aaron Russo. Uh, the fascism. Yes. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Everybody, go look at that. It's corp. What? What was it? The road. To, no. What was the name of it again? Freedom I've, to fascism. Freedom to fascism. And there's also an accompanying uh, interview after he made that movie, just before he died. That's about 30 minutes long. That's a good one to watch too. Yeah. Some people actually think there's a controversy behind his death too. Uh, you know, it could be because he was really nailing it on the head that there are, there are no laws that say you have to pay taxes on your wages. The only thing you have to pay taxes on are profits. You know, that's what income is defined as, your profit. Well, you, when you're a worker, you're getting an exact compensation. You give your work, they give you your wages. That is an even Stephen with no profit. Therefore, no taxes. That's what Aaron Russo went through. He followed that up going as high as he could in the IRS, and not one of the people he talked to could produce the law that said that you had to pay taxes on your wages. That's yeah. the facts, folks. Now, the problem is, if you try to force that through the IRS saying, I don't have to pay, well, there, it depends on what type of a judge you get. If you get an honest judge, you'll win. If you get a crooked judge, you won't. And right now, there have been 26 people who have won and 26 people who have lost. I think that's, I might be wrong on those numbers, but it's about 50-50 of the people that have tried it. 50% of them get convicted and 50% of them win. I have one question for you. Go. Okay, um, you start out with the show, with, if 9-11 is this generation's Pearl Harbor, how can we get the answers? It took so long for any answers to come out about Pearl Harbor. Will you be making another 100 shows before? Uh, you know, probably or? will be, but I hope not. And the, But the thing that's here's a good thing. Uh, we have them on the run. They are desperately trying to counter everything about the 9-11 truth movement that they possibly can. And the reason is they cannot hide from the science. Their own scientists have discovered the evidence of thermate, but they will not talk about it. They have the microspheres in the FEMA report and the USGS. Both of them found those little tiny iron microspheres, which there's no way they can explain that unless they have a temperature way, way hotter than any of the fires that were there. And that puts the lie to their story. And that's the science doing it. Nobody's opinion. That's the fact. Also, the physics of the timing of the fall shows that the structures below the top of the building were removed without impeding the free gravity fall of the top, which cannot happen if the official story is that the falling mass of the top is what destroyed the bottom, but the, the physics says the bottom was destroyed before the top started moving. So 
those two things right there that's science dead science got them dead to rights if they ever have a fair hearing based on the science evidence the u.s government story is gone in a second and they know it and we know it too and that's what's going to get them okay how's that for right on brother i think that pretty well covers it caller and all the rest of it is just a gee whiz about what might have happened and we're speculating and stuff like that but the stuff that's going to get them is the science do we have another caller do we have any caller? Hello, Hello, I hear a call. I hear my Hello? voice now. Caller, Hello. speak up. If your TV's Hello, on in the background, you want to turn off the audio or you'll hear a weird echo. I got everything off. Okay, go for it. Hey, this is Don. I've been watching your show for oh, quite a while now. Really love it. Glad you guys are there. I've Thank been you. wondering if anybody was there. <laughs> uh, and I found out now that there are quite a few people. Uh, Getting more the, and more uh, every day worldwide. That's right. And that's uh, I. I hope that someday in my lifetime that this does come to fruition. That we all find out what the government's doing. But the problem is that the people in this country are scared to death. Yeah, <laughs> They they are they are looking for that paycheck. The minute they don't have the paycheck, that's when something happens. But you know, it goes back. We should be waking up by now, and we're not. It goes back to the Bush election, the second election in Florida. The one that was uh, when when that when that election so was won by the governor's brother. <laughs> uh, that's pretty obvious. Yeah. And uh, then of course, the illegal drugs coming into this country with the uh, illegals coming in, aliens, uh, the economy, and everything that's happening is not just coincidence. Well, I think that it's orchestrated. You're right. And it's to keep us all off guard and to keep worrying us about something else. Uh, it, it, there's, there's no way to fix it until we all wake up and clean the government out at Washington, D.C. You're Quite right on. Simple. And I, I know of no other way. The problem being is how do we organize that? The first thing we have to do is get enough people to understand that, you know, your job isn't important. I mean, every bit of the economy is being squeezed and, and strip mined and the wealth transferred to the rich. We've had the most massive transfer of wealth ever in history. And that's, you know, people are still saying, well, times are bad. Well, yeah, times are bad on purpose. That's not an accident. Every time times go bad, the big boys move in and buy everything up for pennies on the dollar. Then times get good. They sell everything for dollars on the dollar. And then times go bad again. And they repeat the process. And they just keep accumulating wealth. And they want us to believe, oh, it's cyclical. Yeah, it's not a natural cycle. It's a contrived cycle. And, you know, that brings us to the Michael Moore thing. You hear lately Michael Moore is called not for an end of the Fed, but an end of capitalism. And Alex Jones is criticizing him, saying something like, uh, the end of the Fed is more important. You want to leave the Fed and end capitalism? What an idiotic statement. Well, I'm sure that what he meant was end the Fed too. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> the, the, the one thing that, that is not going to happen, though, is as long as we have a certain part of society that's still getting by, that's still making it, still getting paychecks, and that would be most of your unions, most of the things that have to happen, especially uh, the, uh, well, let's say it, teachers, uh, one of the biggest unions in the country. Yeah, well, how about uh, the big attack they're doing right now on the, on the postal workers, what they're really doing well, there? They, that's the biggest union in government, that they're, and they're trying to kick that union out. They call it for privatizing. Somehow adding another 30% to the cost will save us money. I don't know. Yeah, that's exactly right. I agree. <laughs> hey, uh, keep up the good work, guys. Thanks I, a lot. I'm with you. I wish there was something I could do personally to help. Just uh, talk to your neighbors. I, tell them about this I'm, show. You know, that's, that's what I'm doing. That's, right on. That's, I'm right on the Internet to all my friends, and that's what I've been doing. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you, caller. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Thank you. And I saw you looking through your notes. you find anything that, that struck your... 
Well, you know, the uh, the caller was talking about uh, intentional disruptions of American life uh, caused by our own government. Uh, something that's been in the news recently is Operation Fast and Furious. Oh, that's it, the ATF giving guns to the to the cartels in in Mexico. That's correct, Bill. Oh, so man. we're arming the enemy. And then when they kill everybody, they're talking about 40,000 deaths in the last five years in Mexico. That's because we gave them the weapons and set them up. Now, in, in a similar vein, another uh, recent news report tells us that uh, the 7th District Court uh, in Boston has decided that uh, Donald Rumsfeld uh, will be held accountable for... Uh, this is great. Listen to this. Permitting... Uh, torture in Iraq, in Abu Ghraib, and other locations. Uh, the judgment came as a result of the arrest of two Americans in Iraq in 2006. They were detained at Abu Ghraib. Uh, one of them was held for six weeks, and the other one was held for three months, a little over three months These are Americans. at Abu Ghraib. They were tortured at Abu Ghraib. These two Americans were working as FBI operatives. They were contractors for the FBI. They were investigating dr drug and arms smuggling in Iraq that involved the sales of U.S. weapons to the Iraqi insurgents. The U.S. military was arming the Iraqi insurgents, and these two FBI agents found out about got it, caught. got arrested, and put in Abu Ghraib. And in, yeah, in order to stop it from getting out, they put these FBI guys in prison. And by the way, it turns out Abu Ghraib is our cream puff prison. The bad prisons that we run are elsewhere. Lithuania, didn't they just come up with one? I don't know if it was Lithuania, but there's two or three prisons in Europe that the CIA runs that are far worse than Abu Ghraib that are just coming out uh, in into public light a little more. Um, this speaks to 9-11, the way that the United States government with Operation Fast and Furious in the in uh, North America arming the drug cartels. And, yeah, it's kind, uh, of, kind of like what we did with Al-Qaeda, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> the same you, technique used over and over and over again. And if you just, the first time you notice that that's what they're doing, they can never do it again without you saying, aha. That's why it's so important to educate ourselves and learn about what's going on and understand the way that they operate. History is very, very important. You can't just ignore history. You have to study it. Otherwise, they'll catch you by surprise every time. You know, the garden slug doesn't see the the gardener's life or his knife coming down to cut it in half. It just crawls along, fat, dumb, and happy until boom, it's over. It doesn't see it coming. Don't be a garden slug. Learn history. That's right. <laughs> and we're all given the same propaganda throughout grade school and high school and even university. Uh, we get it we from the mainstream media. Uh, academia uh, in their ivory tower perpetuate it. We've got another call coming, but just, I want to say one more thing. Right now, um, we this is an alert that people need to, to really worry about. All over the United States, we're having a giant military mobilization. They are moving equipment on trailers and tractors and you know big trucks, and what they're doing is insurgency practice. Well, I mean, fighting insurgency. Now, who are the insurgents in the United States? What is an insurgent? An insurgent is the indigenous population, in this case us, not just Native Americans, but, you know, it's a, us. We'll update it a bit. And the same thing in Iraq. We're fighting insurgents. Insurgents are the people that are being dominated by somebody else, and they're fighting back to try to save their country. We call those people insurgents. Now, the people here are getting ready to fight us as if we're insurgents. Uh, you know, refer to the FEMA camps by Alex Jones and Jesse Ventura, and w look at the acres upon acres of stacks of coffins that FEMA has ready for us in this country, and it's coming down right now. Check it out yourself. How about a caller? A caller sounds good. Go, caller. We got three minutes. Hello, caller. 
No calls? Oh, they, I guess we got rid of all the calls. Well, we got three minutes left, and I guess all we can do is quickly recap some of the things like the uh, the the first full playing of Architects and Engineers' new release of 9-11 Explosive Evidence, The Experts Speak Out, is this Wednesday at 6 p.m., full two hours and 18 minutes, uh, on Channel 22 at 6 p.m., Wednesday the, the 5th of October. Um, the, the day after that, uh, Portland, OccupyPortland.org is staging an, a sit-in or an occupation of the Portland uh, government downtown. Join that. Be part of it. Let's, let's put ourselves on the map. Then the 15th coming up, we, we talked about that. We do have a caller now. But the 15th coming up is a possible war protest. Go ahead, caller. Hello? Yeah, go ahead. You got about two minutes. You were talking about the science a little bit ago, and you used the word thermate, and that is the wrong word. The word is thermite, and you, if you're going to talk science, you need to get the facts absolutely straight. Well, therm thermate is the the thing that's been around. I mean, thermite is the thing that's been around for over a hundred years. They use it for welding radio, railroad tracks and so on. They that's found right. out that if you add a little sulfur to it it cuts much faster. It's like adding salt to ice. And that's called thermate. Now the stuff that they found at the Trade Center is nanothermite, which is made of tiny, tiny particles that can only be made in a high-tech military laboratory right now. Um, or that's the only place they are made right now. But, ther you know, the fact that they, if you look at the uh, FEMA report, uh, Appendix C of the uh, commission report. Oh, it never made it to the commission report. It's the, it was two years prior. But anyway, Appendix C, they show graphs that show spikes of sulfur, and that's where the thermite, thermate thing came from, because they found sulfur that doesn't have any other explanation. Did well, I, okay, I, you know, I happen to be a practicing metallurgist, but I thought... Did I get that right then? Thermate was not the right word, that's what I think. <laughs> well, there, there was sulfur found at, and other other things like fluorine uh, that are typically added to thermate is my understanding. Now I'm not the ex the chemical expert on that, but Niels Herrett, who uh, is a chemistry engineer uh, professor at the University of Copenhagen for 40 years, uh, explains it quite well. And you can get his videos from the uh, Architects and Engineers for 9/11 Truth org website, and that that'll explain more. I'll, I'll, next show we'll have a discussion on that and okay, see if you can for, clarify it. Thanks for taking my call. Oh, thank you for calling. Thank you, caller. All right, we're going out here in about 20 seconds, and our next show will be exactly two weeks, so that makes it the 15th, the date of the... Oh, good, so I'll be running my show on the day of the uh, war protest. I won't be able to do it if it's on the 15th. Mm -hmm. That's a Saturday. But uh, anyway, nine seconds, six seconds, and we're out. So... Thanks a lot for watching.